Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We're playing in the Hardcore Legacy League as a solo self-found dead eye. And today we are going to continue in Act 2. We're actually going to start in Act 2. And I keep fumbling with my hotkeys to open up this Legacy panel, but so many, so many panels. But we managed to find it. We're gonna run with Nemesis. So we get additional rares in each area and they will have a Nemesis mods. If you say Nemesis, then saying a Torment is a pretty good combination. Because of course, spirits need rares to occupy or unique spots. It's easier to roll more rares than it is to roll more uniques on a map. So if you find a spirit, it might actually possess something. And finally, we're gonna run with Prophecy. Because, well, we need more silver coins. That's uh, the very, very simple line of reasoning there. Act 2 means bandits, and bandits means choices. If we are gonna kill all the bandits, we get one skill point. If we side with Kraytin, we get an extra... Hello there. We get an extra Frenzy charge. And, well, Frenzy is kind of the main charge we are generating. Mm, just happens that we also have some power charges up and running, but Frenzy is the one that we will be most reliably generating. That's gonna boost our attack speed, it's gonna boost our damage. Hello there, Arcanist Strongbox. Um, wait. So, uh, tormented Seditionist, go possess something, pretty please. Quan, yes, there. Quan, don't run away from that. There was a foe there. Uh, there's a dare one as well. Okay, ghosts, they're still stupid. They are still brain dead stupid. There was a there was a nemesis rare, it ran away, and then it half a screen away from the next nemesis rare it decides to unspawn. Yeah. That's what I get for getting my hopes up that Nemesis plus Torment might actually equal some lucky rolls on, on the on the ghosts. Uh, well, there's that, 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 that phrase, if you never get your hopes up, you never can get disappointed. I, I think it, it's a bit of a gloomy negative take on, on, on life. But when it comes to ghosts, that's actually not a bad take on things. So for an Arcanist, we want to see if we can get some extra items. Uh, stream of monsters, sure. And three additional items. That means three additional currencies. That's basically the currency I put in. So let's see if we uh, can double back on our investment. Double or nothing. Well, most likely going to end in nothing. Hallelujah. That's oh. effectively a bit more than what we put in. And more curse on hit. Yeah. Let's well, keep following the road. But Kraytin is gonna get us a frenzy charge, which I I really like. If we were to side with Oak, we're gonna get an endurance charge. This build doesn't use endurance charges. The, uh, there's only a couple ways to reliably generate them, and most of them involve um, either tanking stuff, taunting stuff, or stunning stuff in melee. Neither of which we really do. Frenzy charges are uh, more reliable to generate, of course, via the uh, frenzy attack. And power charges with uh, power charge on a critical, which works for any kind of hit. Uh, power charge on critical. Yeah, it's, it's on any crit. It's spells, it's attacks. Just as long as you hit and crit, you are a golden. Let's see. And this was a pretty straightforward short run. For now, if we're missing out on something, I'm not really gonna shed any tears over that. Goals to simply get move forward with our life. Hello there. I heard currency, that means I must backtrack. Grab myself some currency. If we were to side with Alira, we would get power charge. 
which helps with increasing our chance to crit by 50%. Uh, though it's an increase by, um, versus the base crit of 5 or so percent chance that we have. Or I think it's actually 7.3. So our crit chance would go up by 50% of the 7%. So oh, that, that's 3.65% chance to crit that we gain on top. So, uh, power charges, they're useful, but they're not, not insanely strong. And especially because they're not really all that reliable to generate yet. I think going with the more reliable damage increase from Frenzy is probably going to be better. Also because that's just easier to keep up. Uh, actually, let's just ignore those. That's it. Maybe I should do the uh, the actual math on, on this. I uh, no path of building. I have been using it, but it is actually pretty useful for just answering some questions for yourself. Like, no, picking a extra frenzy charge or picking an extra. Oh, hello there. Go meet and greet. I'll uh, just pick up this one too. But it is useful for, for helping you answer some questions like, well, would it be useful, more useful to pick up a frenzy charge or a extra power charge? So I think I'll actually do that. I mean, we won't make our choice until we have killed Oak. And most of the time, uh, this episode, the, fir the first episode of Act 2, I clear the Chamber of Sins and that's about all she wrote. Then, no, oh, there's... Not a lot of time left. On the other hand, we might be lucky and progress a little bit faster through things just because I want to postpone my decision here. But either way, Oak is gonna die. So what we could do if, no, let's say within 15 minutes or so, we kill the dude here, then we're simply gonna go forward uh, to the Northern Forest uh, first and grab the waypoint there. And then next episode, we will resolve the, the conundrum of which of the bandits to side with, whether it's going to be Alira or whether it's going to be Creighton. Because oh, decisions like that, they, you can theory craft them. So I probably should like, no, like, a, like, a, like a properly responsible YouTuber, which sounds way more official than what I'm doing here. Is of course. But no, it is nice. Uh, I do like my theory crafting. So might as well just uh, do a little bit of analysis there to see if that that extra little bit of crit chance, whether it really matters. Or whether it's better to just go for better base damage. And uh, currently our crit chance is not overly high, so. Ooh. There's nothing for you to possess, so you'll just get killed. I'm sorry, but that's that stems the rules. There are well, there are multiple factors that will weigh in, of course. I mean the the higher the, the the crit chance that we have is the less relevant additional crit chance is going to be. At least that's what I suspect. On the other hand, on our eye shot, we do have increased critical strike chance support, which is going to add some some extra base crit. So not seven point three here. We get another 1.7 percent currently so that would make it nine percent so then of course 50 percent uh, increase is going to be four and a half not 3.65 so just by just simply realizing like hey wait there might actually be more to this it no oh, it appears there is more oh okay so this is where the frostball got in the way and i don't think you're gonna find it there anytime soon so we'll just murder you So, 
yeah, I'll, uh, I'll research this a little bit and I'll get back to you next episode to, to see what, based on, on my research, um, would be the best choice here in terms of, of bandits. And maybe if I can find out uh, what would be the more... Oh, what would be the significance? Would it be like, yeah, technically one is better than the other, but no, it, it's like a, a 0 0.001% um, difference in, in DPS. In which case, of course, it's easier to go simply go for Frenzy because it is more reliable than the power chargers. On the other hand, if power chargers, oh, let's say, provide you with a net 10% damage increase or just to just pluck some random number from the air. If, if it would really be that big a difference, then it could be worth it. And especially if you increase your, your crit chance, therefore quitting more reliably and hitting those high damage numbers more reliably, then of course you will be more consistently stunning bosses. And of course, Stunning bosses more consistently adds to safety in boss fights and across the board if you're critting things, you're stunning things, you're freezing things and if you don't kill them with a single hit, which with a crit is more likely, then at least you're going to freeze them giving yourself ample time to shoot again. So you don't actually have to answer, uh, ask questions later. So from that perspective, even if the frenzy comes up with higher dps just the the fact of increasing crit reliability by increasing your power charge count might actually be uh, a very important factor to consider so well, without even doing any math here i've already made a very compelling case for simply going for power charges or maybe keeping them roughly the same, that, that way that helps as well. And then you can consider from the, as a, as a ranger, you really have to go out of your way to in order to pick up power charges on the skill tree. So going with Alira in terms of bandits to pick up a power charge so you don't have to go out of your way on the skill tree actually is a very strong argument for going for uh, the power charge and using the skill tree to obtain more frenzy charges. So that way, well, we pick up the, the, the ranger frenzy charge, we pick up the shadow frenzy charge, and we pick up the duelist frenzy charge, that's three, makes a total of six frenzy charges. Gets us a 24% um, more damage multiplier, and I think there's also a similar attack speed more multiplier. I'm so bad at charges, aren't I? Frenzy, charges, 4% attack speed and a 4% more damage modifier. So indeed, that's 24% more attack speed or increased attack speed and more damage. Let's see, Fidelitas. Let's just uh, take a step backward, freeze your minions. Okay, you have been cursed. Here, let's uh, give you a trap. So we shock you. I don't think that really worked. Okay, now you're shocked and boom, you're dead. Wow, that's 14 minutes. As I said, if we can do this within 15 minutes, might as well go for the for the next area. So if we go for four power charges and for six frenzy charges, I think we're doing pretty all right. So yeah, I'm actually changing what I was init initially theory crafting. And let's see. Oh, we'll go with that one. And we will uh, side Welcome with the witch for the very first time in a long, long, long time. Oh, maybe I should not pick up my currency that way. This was the storm prison. Yes. Plus one to power charges. 26% chance to gain a power charge on kill. This is, this is almost like it was meant to be. Now I, I changed my mind and then we find a storm prison. So it, it's a sign from the from the POE gods. Um, 
Let's see, how are we in terms of uh, stones? Pretty low. We have one more seditionist. Um, let's pick up something else. So, leak stones. Let's see. The thing is, we're gonna go into the riverways and then up into the, the north thing. So we're not gonna do them both. So having an invasion boss in an area that we're only gonna half complete, maybe not the best of ideas. Because um, I, I care quite a bit about uh, getting all the invasion bosses, so I don't really want to waste any stones. Talisman, I, I couldn't care less if I uh, if one of them gets missed. And Onslaught, that's the same. We, we can do without Onslaught. Uh, Tormented Spirits... Uh, you know what, we'll take that out and we'll put in something else that's environmental. Do I have the ghosts? Yes. Um, tempests. I don't care about tempests. Boom. All right. Next up, the riverways. So, a little bit of a, a change in the normal or routine. But oh, also, let's not get chilled. So that's a uh, freezing tempest of sorts. Arctic tempest is called. Also, maybe I should keep my uh, frost thing up. Okay. Ooh, more wisdom. That's good. Yeah, but uh, going with more evasion. Or with uh, six frenzies and four power charges, and therefore by choosing Alira. Just from a from a, a, a non numbers, but just purely from a, a rational reasoning perspective, I think it makes more sense. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll uh, I'll do the numbers anyway, just to see if I'm really losing out on a lot of damage that way. But I think once we got all six of the uh, frenzy charges. Our attack speed is going to be good enough anyway. So going from 24% attack speed to 28% attack speed, or from 24% more damage to 28% more damage. Uh, potato, potato, right? That's Yes, it matters, but does it really, really matter? Especially if you're just shooting more, therefore generating more charges. Okay, so this is... We'll go into the wetlands. Normally I go to the western forest. So, change of pace. Uh, we have shocking ground, freezing tempest of lightning. Uh. So freezing is, if you stand in the tempest, you get frozen. Lightning is shocking ground all over the place. Okay, I think I just want to pick this one up and then we'll just dive out. So, note to self here, don't stand on the shocking ground. Because we will be taking 50% more damage. Or, we will take 50% increased damage, so that's effectively a, a more multiplier for the mobs. It's nice when we inflict it, it's not nice when they inflict it. So, we actually stumbled into the camp, that's good. So we got stalked by a couple of those snakes. Get away from me. Okay. And we'll just uh, put that one down there. And then we'll just uh, kill you. Okay. Have yourself a... Uh, I was gonna say, have yourself a nice freeze charge. Curse you. And then just go all out and focus no more. Do some good for once in your sorry life, bandit. Feed the worms. And that gets us one. Oak amulet. Ding dong, the bandit is dead. And for once, we're not gonna go with the witch is dead. What's up with that? Well, anyway, this is gonna nicely set us up for a, a quick entry into the uh, Val of Ruins. Because the waypoint should be somewhere, somewhere along the edge of the map. 
there was a little bit of a, a guess as to whether it's going to be at the top in the cave or it's going to be on the left side in the cave, but either way, it's going to be a cave somewhere. And I'm being pursued by bandits. Or did we just teleport into a... Yeah. Into a freeze tempest. Oop. That's the downside of the uh, bandit camps. They slowly spawn behind you. Also, maybe I should keep an eye out for tempests. Like that. They, they spawn behind that, so they effectively can sneak up on you. But I've got a feeling that I'm just overshooting this way too far and I should be on the other side of the map. Yeah, because we're, we're getting closer to the, to the entrance. So let's just cross over. And, ooh, Essence. Essence of woe. Okay. Let's see. We'll throw down a trap, put down a thingamajig, and then let's get out of the way. And we'll just shoot at him. So, note self. Don't stand in the lightning. Maybe I shouldn't be tanking that. Let's just shoot at things from a distance. Also, getting frozen. Not good for your health. It's nice when they just shatter as, a, as an entire group upon arrival. Still satisfying. Not by increasing our crit chance, of course. That only happens more irregularly. Okay, let's not get frozen. There's probably gonna be some people coming out. Yep, yep. Okay, I think I'm, I'm getting pretty close to it, just doing a, a full clear on the map here. In which case, it, it would have actually been useful to just pick up one of those uh, innovation boss stones. But yeah, so normally you'd click this, open it, but we actually only have the uh, Baleful Gem here. We don't actually have the uh, Spider Queen's Spike. So that's going to be next episode. We're going to go hunt after the, the Spider Queen. We have to do all these stuff in the Western Forest. Because we are going to side with Alira. Next episode, of course, Creighton must die. But that's all going to be for next episode. So we're mixing things up, doing things in a slightly different order than a normal. Well, next episode, we're going to do everything that is there to prepare for the uh, Val Ruins. And then after that, we're just simply going to mop up and finish up Act 2. So as always, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.